We're we can do crafting. it. Let's let's get to let's it. Let's get crafting. We need to know the supplies, Lauren, that you need for today's project. This is incredible. So, I'm super excited. First off, I have some of the supplies, but I have my box of supplies yes. because there are so many supplies for this. However, most of this are things. These are things that you should have at your house. Most yeah. of them. Some of them you will not. So um, the glitters, and I have actually linked all of the different colors of glitter. We'll go overhead so I can show you guys. I've linked all of these different colors um, in your supply list. These are all StarCraft glitters. Um, we've got Pirate's Cove, Baked Bronze, Sunbathe, Goldfish, and this one is Don't Be Coy. So these are all the ones. As you can see, we have two chunky glitters. And then we have three fine glitters. So this is the key when you are making these snow globe tumblers. You do not need to use all fine glitter. You have to use some type of chunky glitter. And I would honestly try my best to do like a, if not 50-50, um, I would, I mean, it needs to be a good majority of chunky glitter. Now, why do you prefer the chunky glitter? Does it show up better? Do you well, need to use less of it? Like, what's the secret here? So, the secret sauce for this is the chunky glitter, and I'll turn this upside down. Oh. If you use too much fine glitter, it ends up clumping. You can see over here, this fine glitter clumping up right here, but that chunky glitter kind of breaks it apart. So, adding that chunky glitter really helps to break that fine glitter apart and it doesn't clump together and it because it tends to try to stick together when it's all in there uh -huh. and just fine glitter so that's why you really want a good good base of chunky glitter um, and these two are really really great especially the don't be coy is a great one um and it's very versatile. Like, I feel like it could be used with so many different projects because it's an iridescent glitter so what it's going to do is it's going to pick up whatever uh, fine glitter color you have in here and it's going to reflect that so this would be one to a great one to grab because it's not silver um it's not gold it's got that iridescent color to right. it so it's going to pick up whatever color you use so joanne said does it just give more contrast so it does give more contrast but like i said if you can see it's kind of hard sometimes it'll chunk up like right here we overhead what happens is that fine glitter just I chunks up. I love it. And see how it's over here, but that chunky glitter breaks it apart yeah. so that it's not so chunky in your cup. So would you say ideal world, 75% chunky, 25% fine just to kind of be the filler? Um, I would say, yeah, or 60-40 or okay. is a good. 60-40 yeah, okay. is good. Love so it. obviously our base is the glitter. Um, you definitely need a double-walled, cup this these we just got from amazon now we are going to be drilling holes in this cup so just know that it's not going to be um vacuum sealed after that so you're going to get condensation if you use this as a cold cup before we break if if you just use it like this you will not get this condensation on the outside but no once we break through the bottom you are going to, um, you will get condensation on the outside. So that's just a FYI, FYI disclaimer. Um, for the inside, we are using glycerin. Now this is very important. You don't just want to use water. You want to use, um, we're doing about one third glycerin, two thirds water, and we're doing it in a squirt bottle. I already have some here. Um, I'll probably mix some more. But this is just, um, we got this on um, Amazon. It is linked down below. But just, the, you can get it at Walmart. Yeah, it's Basically, pretty common. Yeah, it's very common. Um, but we are using glycerin. That is very important for this cup. And then, let's see. So Let pretty me much, I mean, let's just recap everything you've got going on today. I mean, there's... We've got, you're drilling through the cup. Drilling through the cup. You're adding your glitter, glycerin, water mix. Yes. You've got to seal your cup back. Yes. We've got to make whatever, we haven't even got to the top, which is beautiful. Yes. And we've got a cricket element. Yes. This is gonna be amazing. This is huge. This is This big. is huge. So I also, here's another one. I used Call Me Captain. And I'll, this is gonna be for the, um, the little whipped cream. So we'll save that for later. That's just a little extra that, because I like to be a little extra. Today we are using heat transfer vinyl 
and permanent vinyl. So we are teaching you all and showing you all how you can use heat transfer vinyl on top of permanent vinyl. Um, that's what we did with this cup. We Because basically I didn't have the color that I wanted and permanent vinyl, and so we had it in heat transfer. I used heat transfer vinyl, ironed it on my permanent, good to go. Amazing. Um, you are going to need piping bags if you plan on doing the whipped cream portion. So we're gonna set this over here. We've got cup portion, vinyl portion, whipped cream portion. Amazing. Lots of stuff. Um, I just added a little bit of cinnamon on top. Once again, <laughs> this is just me being extra. You don't have to. Um, this is the start of the whips. We'll tell Love about that it. in a minute. Um, you, if you are going to do the whips, you're gonna need the fast and final lightweight spackling. Um, this is very important for this. It's super lightweight, um, but just a little heads up. This is not going to be dishwasher safe, food safe. So I'm gonna show you two different options for this. One that you can take off and use as decoration. And then if you want to put it on top of the cup, this one I actually <clears throat> attach to the top of the cup. So we're gonna give you two different options it's today. It's really cool. Okay. Um, you're definitely gonna need clear packing tape. This is going to be to help seal the bottom of your cup Amazing. back. Um, this is a star tip, and this is gonna go with your popping stuff if you are doing the whipped creams. I just wanna give a good disclaimer right now. If you're like, okay, there's a lot of supplies here. I think I have a lot of these on hand. Guess what? The description of this video has everything down below. So mm -hmm. take a look. We have linked, if you need to grab anything, we've linked it all for you, which is incredible. Um, but let's say you don't want, say you have a lot of these supplies, just go through and be like, check, 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 check. Like I have my own glitter, I have this and that. The supply list is there for you all just to reference and to be support for you because this project, you, you are gonna wanna recreate it. Yes, okay, so let's go overhead. I know I said that I use Starcraft Final and that's what we're gonna use today, but I found this at Dollar Tree and forgot that I put this in my box. These colors are almost exactly the colors. So if you have a Dollar wow. Tree close, these are um, six different glitter colors that you could use for this tumbler and not have to buy the full bottles from uh, 143. I love it. Just, just a FYI. You're given lots of options. And I'm lots of it. options. Trying to make sure that <clears throat> you all have all the options. So without further ado, we are going to get started. This is gonna be awesome. It is going to be amazing. So let's go overhead and I'm gonna show you guys what we're gonna do first. So before I start the drilling process, I'm going to mix my glitters in a bowl here. So I wanna start out with my chunky glitters and make sure I have, I'm not measuring, I'm measuring with my heart. I like to measure with my heart a lot, especially cooking, crafting, everything else. We just measure with our heart. If you see Lauren make some mashed potatoes, you know her heart isn't going in the right direction. Oh yeah, measure <laughs> with her heart. So the key to this is getting a good, getting a really, it's hard to give you exact measurements on how much glitter for each cup. So we're just gonna start out with a little bit. We can always mix more. That's what I loved. I like to start out with small, mix more later if you have to. So once again, we're just coming in here and we're gonna measure with our heart. Whoop. Sometimes our heart says more. So Joanne, we do not recommend using any like plugs and like gluing it. What you're gonna see, Lauren's gonna explain to you our process. And I, it, it's really permanent and it will work really well for you today. Yeah. Um, another question, I didn't get to see the Dollar Tree glitter. Is that fine glitter or is it a mix? It's just fine glitter. That's okay. the only thing is it is just fine glitter. That's why I said this don't be coy is a great glitter to have on hand as a chunky glitter if you plan on making multiple cups because it is so versatile. So you can actually do your full like 60% base of just this don't be coy if you wanted to. Um, I just really like this Pirate's Cove. Um, so you could do that and then add in your Dollar Tree fine glitter if you didn't think that you were gonna use these oranges or any of those much more. I so, love it. So no, the Dollar Tree was not a chunky glitter. So we're just mixing this around. Um, I feel like that's a pretty good place to start because a little, honestly, a little goes a lot further than you think with this cup. So we've got this mixed. What we're gonna do is now we are going to start the process 
of drilling into our cup. And I did see where Megan said earlier um, that the drilling part is the scariest. And I can agree, it, it can be. But using a light finger on your trigger is key when it comes to drilling through your cup. So I'm actually using, the size of this drill bit is 11 64ths. It doesn't have to be this precise. Um, you just don't wanna go too small. This is not going to create a big enough hole to put all your glitter through. So that's why I chose the 11 64ths. So I'm going to put this in here. Now, Make sure now they that say locks. this is the this is the hard. I would say this is the hardest part. Yeah. This is it. Like if you can do this, have help to do this. Once you do this one time, you're gonna be obsessed with this technique. Yeah. Like you're gonna want to do so many of these, like white chocolate mocha one. Yeah. Like all of them. So this cup was actually my first cup ever doing the snow globe tumbler. Really? Yes. It was my very first oh my snow gosh. globe tumbler. We love the and snow globe tumbler. I am obsessed now. Courtney made like. Five, I feel like five of them last year and she got addicted. I know. Okay, so what we're doing is this center of the screen. We good? Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna try your best to get as close to this edge as possible. You don't wanna get in toward the middle because then you have the, you, ha, you run the risk of putting your drill bit through the second layer, this inner wall. So you wanna try your best to get out here to the outer wall. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna place this down and we're just using light pressure, we're gonna start drilling through our first wall on this tumbler. So once again, let's get it right here, there we go. And you're gonna see the um, acrylic start curling up. It's okay. You don't wanna push very hard, see? And then it comes through, leave it there, reverse your drill bit, and pull it out. And actually, now that I'm looking at that, that, this drill bit may be, it may not be, it may be big enough, we'll see. We'll play around with it. Um, so, one thing that I discovered when doing this, um, some people just do one side, I like to do drill through both sides Wow! because I feel like that allows the air. So when you add the glycerin and water mixture to one side, it kind of pushes the air out through the other side so you don't get a lot of bubbles in there. Smart, love so this. So we're going to drill through this side. Once again, Hurry and it. grab that, we love it, woohoo! I'm wanting to see, oh yeah, I think that'll be fine. That's gonna be good. I was just afraid that it might be too small, but I think we're gonna be good. Um, next thing you're going to do. So we have started our, already have some glycerin and water mixed here in this thing. So I'm going to use what I have first. Now what I did is I just mixed, took this bottle, um, I filled it up so you can kind of eyeball, you know me and Alicia are queens of eyeballing. We're just gonna break it up. So I filled it about one third of the way full of glycerin and the rest filled with water. And this is how much I used, let's go uh, to the front camera. So I used about a half of this bottle, probably a little more than half of this bottle for one cup. So for each um, bottle, you should be able to fill, possibly fill two cups with this. How neat. So I love that. Um, we are going to first, Add in. Kathy is so glad that you actually are able to share the bit size. It's the first time she's heard anyone actually tell her what bit size to use. So thank you. Well, I'm here for it. Look at So this. we're gonna put a little bit of water in the bottom first. Now what this does is this prevents this glitter from getting clogged down here. Oh. What happens is it kind of starts floating around down here. If you don't put your water glycerin mixture first, you're going, the, the glitter is going to stay down here and it's hard for that mixture to get in between all the glitters. Wow. So that's why we like to put the water in first. Um, okay, now Megan's throwing you a, a curveball. Distilled water or regular tap water? Listen, I grabbed a bottle of water um, out of the pack that we have. I think it's just spring water. 
<laughs> so Which this I is a spring it, water yeah. mixture. <laughs> I don't think that, um, I don't think it matters. Right. I just think if you just having some water, I think tap water will be fine. <laughs> so here is my next trick for you guys. Um, when it comes to filling glitter, you all know that it can be a pain. Yes. And get very messy. What's the secret? The secret sauce to this is we are going to take this tape. We're going to cut it. I got to see you and Courtney developing the secret. Yes. It's crazy. And we are going to take our tape. We're going to wrap it with the sticky side on the outside. If you put the sticky side on the inside, your glitter is just going to get stuck. So we're going to take our tape and we're going to wrap it around the outside of our cup so that we create a wall on the outside. It looks a little crazy. It does look a little looks cray cray. Looks a little like, what is she doing? What do is we, this do crazy woman this? doing? Okay, <laughs> let's go overhead. Y'all see my little wall of tape. Now what you're going to do, mix this up once more. We're Did going. You add, oh my gosh, these colors. Guys, are you all not huge fan of these colors? Let's get this little guy. Are you not dying over, over the colors? We're just going to fill up the top. Woohoo! Just a little bit. And then, y'all, we're just going to start. Love tapping. it. Lauren, they're so focused. They're not commenting because they're watching this technique. They're, everyone has their eyes peeled in this project. How long does a project usually take you when you're making either a snow globe tumbler or a regular tumbler tumbler? So Lauren, how long would you say this would take start to finish? Um, start to finish, is this with or without the whipped cream? Let's say without the whipped cream. Without the whipped cream, 30 minutes. Wow. So this is really, I mean, you, Not once you very get your long. process done, um, down, it's gonna be really, really good. And honestly, you could uh, do it less than that too. Yeah. Yeah, this is incredible. I we're mean, gonna actually at... take this drill Ooh, bit and we're I gonna start that. pushing it down in here. This is the smaller drill bit. I'm just gonna start moving it. Um, so Patty this- says we are paying attention. <laughs> so you can take a toothpick. I just have this drill bit handy. I'm just gonna start moving this around and I'm gonna put some on the other side too because I don't want it all to go in one side and just completely um, clump up on that side. So it takes a minute. Let's see. Stacy says every time I make a snow globe tumbler, it leaks from the top. Huh. Huh. Wonder what kind of cup you're using, Stacy. I don't know. That's another thing. Um, once you make these, do not put them in the dishwasher. Because once again, We've said it once, we'll say it again. Handmade equals. Yes, hand wash. Hand wash. Woohoo. Okay, Kathy so if like, I was I'm making this it. again, so close. or if I was making another one, I must have grabbed the wrong drill bit. Um, I may have Alicia or somebody bring in the drill bits and tell you another size because I think this 11 64ths, it's a good size to put your glycerin and stuff in. And if you have time, it gives, it leaves less room for error, um, I guess with hitting that second wall, but it is a little more time consuming with pushing this glitter through. So just keep that in mind. The bigger drill bit you use, the easier the glitter will go through it. However, you do take more of a risk of hitting that second wall. I think the 11 64th is probably a good bet. Um, if you're scared, just make sure you have, I mean, it's gonna take some time pushing this glitter through. Let's see, would it be easier without the chunky glitter? So Margaret, if you were here at the beginning, um, remember I said the reason we're using the chunky glitter is because if we don't use the chunky glitter, What's gonna happen is that fine glitter is going to um, just clump up and what it's gonna do is it's just going, it's not going to flow as easy and it's not going to look as pretty. So the reason we put the hole near the edge is because if you put it in the center, 
what's going to happen is that glitter is just going to sit there on the top. It's not going to move around the sides. Um, Us putting it on the sides allows the glitter to go down the side walls of this cup. You don't want it stuck right there on top. And if you missed it, we did drill two holes, one on each side. So that way when we add our water and glycerin mixture, then we, well, if I can get in there. When we add the water glycerin mixture, it pushes the air out on this side so that we don't get bubbles. If you can see, let me try to hold it to the side. You can see we don't have any bubbles here. It allows the air to flow through this side while the water comes through this other side. Just Love like it. the arrow, it's just, it's science. That's incredible. And then after we did our first round of glitter, you all can see oh, nothing is together. getting stuck. So we're just gonna mix this around. And really you can use as little or as much glitter as you'd like. This is going to be personal preference. So now we're going to mix this again. And we're going to add some more. And I actually think, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more orange with this one. So I'm just gonna come in here and add some more orange on the top of this. And that's the beauty with this project, is you can do it literally however you want. Yay! Oh my gosh, this tumbler is so good. I mean, you guys are gonna love it. This is the hardest part, like the Cricut part for today's project. Super easy. I mean, a so breeze. Good. A breeze. Um, and then to literally, literally Lauren is gonna show you how to put icing on the cake on top yes, of your project Yes, now today. let me just go ahead and say this icing on the cake is something that's going to take a couple days um, and the reason being is because this has to dry um, so just keep that in mind if you are wanting to make them made possibly to sell I would suggest you batch your whipped cream all yeah. in one like do it and it's gonna just know that production is going to take a little longer like it's not gonna be an oh it's not gonna be a one-day thing it's gonna yeah. take a couple days so look at you, okay. oh my goodness. Now we're gonna add more of our water glycerin mixture. Look at this. I like how you're doing, so if you all are just tuning in, she recommends the water glycerin base first, just a little, yes. to help with your glitter. And then you just kind of go back and forth, add the glitter, add the glycerin back and forth. Yep. Um, it's pretty awesome. Look and at then that. let's see let's put some on this side because i think this is where most of our glitter went and that's one thing just keep in mind see where your glitter went so that it doesn't get so chunky and then i don't want to like turn it upside down completely just yet because it will fall off the bottom just keep that in mind love it um i think we've got a pretty good base of chunky i'm gonna add some more I think I did a little, I was a little light handed on this fine glitter today. So I'm going to add just a little bit more right here. As you all can see, that fine glitter just goes right in there. Yeah, it's awesome. But see, this is what I was talking about. It getting, you see right here, this is why we don't just use fine glitter. Uh -huh. Like I've got enough chunky in there that it's going to disperse but this is why we don't use just fine glitter, okay? Love it. So we're gonna put this in here, break it up, and then we're gonna mix it. Woohoo! Look at that. See, so if that does that, just use the heel of your hand and bust that up, but that's why the we like to use it. Really Kind of helps too. Yeah. So let's see. Let's. Oh no! I lost my walls. <laughs> We're gonna put our walls back on. Actually, while our walls are off, let's make sure. Let's check this. I'm gonna put my fingers over top of here, and we're gonna see what we think. I still think we need some more glitter. I don't know. Maybe. What do y'all think? More glitter? I think we can always use more glitter. Yeah, always could use more. I mean, the one, the finished product has so much in it, it looks so good. 
Okay, so we're building our wall again. Building our tape wall. I don't know that this tape wall is going to say I might have to do a new <laughs> tape wall. This is another thing. If you all are doing this, it's going to get messy. Yes. Get Just your be space prepared. ready. <laughs> be prepared for the mess. Let's see. This is the one thing that packing tape is magical. It is, but when I'm using it for this, like it's hard to yeah. see. And yeah. Let's see. Oh my goodness. So we have Diane. She said, I wasn't going to buy resin, but now you forced me. Guys, this is a great reason to try out UV resin. Oh yeah. Because this is a practical project. You are opening up, you know, this double walled tumbler. You're adding in something and making it something so new, and then you're going to use this UV resin to kind of seal it up um, very quickly. Like Lauren, you know, 30, 45 minutes, and you're going to have an amazing uh, double walled glitter tumbler. Yes, which is actually something I just realized. We've been using UV resin so much. We love it. We've been passing it around. It's currently not in here. Oh, let me go grab it. Thank you. Because we will be using that here in just a second. Okay, y'all, this is, once again, I apologize, this is the longest um, portion of this project, is getting this glitter in here. It's my favorite, but it does take a minute. Um, I've been wanting to do this, but I'm so nervous about messing up. Kathy, do not be nervous, I promise you, because once you do it the very first time, you're going to be absolutely hooked with this. Um, my first snow globe tumbler was the one that you see on our thumbnail um so do not like don't fret messing up is part of crafting but i really don't think this is in my opinion a pretty foolproof craft the only thing is using that drill if you're not comfortable with a drill um have a friend help you out with yeah. it like this i mean you also got to see lauren do that process just a few moments ago, and it really isn't that challenging. Like, if you've never worked with a drill, maybe do some, you know, just drill some on a spare piece of wood or something, just to get comfortable with it yes. before you head to the tumbler. But once you do this project, it'll kind of set you up to do other projects. And you guys know, having the power of a drill and things like that, it's kind of a great skill to have. So I think you all are gonna love it. Okay, here we go. Yay! Using the heel of your hand to move this glitter around is very important. Yeah. So we're just going to make sure that our glitter falls and it's not stuck. Yes. Okay, I think we are ready to fill the rest up and then add our resin. Woohoo! Yay! So what we're going to do now, we are going to wipe the top of our where are our, um, there they are. They normally sit up here. We're just going to wipe the top of our cup off. Kathy, you can totally make this project. No need to be nervous whatsoever. You will love doing this nice and slow. We feel comfortable enough to do it as a live stream. So any project you see that we do as a live stream, it means that we know you're capable of it. There's not many things that can go wrong. It is something, I mean, that we just did live. So mm -hmm. you can't tell me that you couldn't do it because you can't, right? Like you're go rock it. So Lauren's adding in her last little bit of glycerin. So now you're going to add Ooh. the water glycerin mixture all the way to the top. We're there gonna... are, okay, Joanne, we have other cups that we actually love. Any double wall um, cup will work. We have the kids um some smaller ones and that was what we tested on and kind of developed our process courtney did um she did a live stream from the christmas time and i loved it because it has a really big area at the bottom to kind of allow you to fill in yes um, so there are different sizes just look at the double wall tumblers yes so the ones that she used was actually they were double walled like wine glasses yes they have a lot more area at the bottom that you can work with. So what I have done is I have added, and there's a little bubble right here of air. So I'm gonna try to move that, oops, I'm spilling out the side. <laughs> I'm just gonna move that bubble over this way and I'm gonna fill up this edge. And I'm gonna, it's gonna pop out the other side. 
Okay, so we're good. We've got enough in there right now. You are now just going to make sure that this is wiped off. Love it. We are going to take our UV resin. This is the J Diction is our favorite. We absolutely love it. So what I'm gonna do first with this tumbler specifically, there is a little bit of an indention here at the bottom. Um, I'm going to fill that up with UV resin. But first, before we fill it up, we are going to take our clear packing tape. We are going to cut a couple pieces off. So we've got our clear packing tape. We're gonna take a very small piece, just enough to cover up the holes, and we are going to cover up this side of the cup with that clear packing tape. We're gonna make sure it fits down very nice and tight. Okay, so can you just recap for everyone what okay. you just did? I'm taking the clear packing tape, cutting a small piece of it. Can you all see that? Yeah. And I'm taking this tape and I'm covering this hole with that clear packing tape. Okay. So what that's gonna do is that's going to seal in that moisture, so the water and glycerin mixture, so that when I add my UV resin, my UV resin doesn't fall down into the cup. That's why, that is why we're doing that. It's not, it's, it's basically just to keep a barrier for our UV resin to not go down into the cup. Oh. That's what that is for. So now that I've got that added, I'm going to get some gloves. I almost forgot my gloves, y'all. That would have we been. have stocked gloves now in the studio because we need them so much. I love it. Okay, so I'm going to take the UV resin first, and I'm going to add it to the center portion of this cup. Now, we get questions about UV resin all the time. Does it have an odor? Not really. It's no. It's very low odor, very um, interesting. I highly recommend UV resin is a one-part solution, so there's no mixing. You right. You kind of... You get it in this bottle. I love the bottle that we have right now because, um, look, she's able to make sure she's not wasting any whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Then you either take it outside. Like, it's a very sunny day. We could sit it outside, but we have the UV lot, too. So I do recommend, if you're going UV resin today, to invest in a UV light, wouldn't you say, Lauren? I would, and I would try to get a pretty high wattage of a yeah. light. Um, the nail lights are perfect for UV resin. So if any of our friends out there gets gel polish on your nails, you know you have to cure your nails under a UV light. Yep. You can buy those UV lights on Amazon, and those are great for UV yeah. resin. So that. what I'm doing now is I just did the inner portion of this of the bottom of the cup because like I said there's a dip in the cup and you don't want to get the UV resin very thick you want to cure it in thin layers so I'm curing this first layer to make the bottom of the cup even all the way across right first and then we're gonna seal the whole bottom okay so we have Kirsten saying I feel so hesitant the packing tape would not be enough Kirsten it's not enough if we no. were just putting packing tape on this it would not be enough What's happening here is the resin is the secret sauce. So you're getting the secret sauce of using the resin with the packing tape for support. Yeah. Is it already it's sealed? Cured. It's cured. It, this, the, it now, the so now we have an even surface all the way across. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in. We're going to make sure I see where my holes are. And just because I don't necessarily want to put it just where the packing tape is, I really want to get a super good seal on this. I'm actually gonna put it all over the bottom of the cup. And then what you can do is you can come in here with your gloved hand and kind of move it around to make sure it is even all the way across. Yeah. Now, Kathy, if you're wanting to cure your resin project w through like sheer uh, blonde or sheer curtains, inside i don't think it'll necessarily cure near as fast as if a you put it outside in direct sunlight like the, the direct sunlight is the secret here um so make sure we i mean technically you could cure it on a cloudy day too it would just take a lot longer yeah the sunny days is where you're gonna be like okay yeah that was really fast we have cured things with uv resin especially at boot camp what project was it at boot camp the um oh was it our, the dish, soap our dish soap tumbler we cured that using sunlight 
on the live stream. So you guys know we're talking the talk, walking the walk, day in, day out, which we yeah. love. So I'm just coming in here, making sure my edges look really good. The good part about this is if you do have some spillage over the sides, you can actually just take a little, um, like a sanding block, yeah. a very fine grit sanding block, and even that out. So now we're just gonna cure the bottom. We're I mean, almost at 12 months of use. It's pretty cured already. I'm gonna actually have you sit this outside yeah. while I work on. <gasps> okay. Woohoo. Hold I on just love, a second. I love this. So while we're chatting, guys. This is a process. We do have a mess. Um, be prepared to have glitter on you for about a week. <laughs> just part of it. So what we're gonna do now, I'm kinda gonna clean up my area a little bit. Because you're getting ready for part two of yes. the project. Part two of our project is our design space portion. Now, how would you say the this UV resin self levels? That was a great question we had. Um, so I like to, it does, as far as self leveling, let's talk about this, because I do like this question. Um, it does not self level as well as casting resin. Yeah. Because the UV resin cures so fast. So you have to be very careful. You have to kind of have it ready. You have to, not only do you have to have it ready, but if you don't want it to cure super fast, I have had it cure, which we have a very um, well lit craft area. And it actually cured on me just through the sun, through the windows. Cure, it didn't fully cure, but it started curing on me before I could get it leveled. So I would suggest if you're trying to get it perfectly level, do it away from a window. Um, it does, it ends up self-leveling pretty good. Yeah. Um, it's just not as well as the casting. Right. That's what you, what you want to be aware of. But I also, I like the UV resin better than casting. I, like I used to be a casting resin, nothing else. Well, casting resin, it has room for mistakes because you can fix air bubbles. Yes. It's it's a longer process, so it gives you working time. Yes. Which I do appreciate. But mm -hmm. I will say for someone that's using casting resin for a long time, when it takes a long time to cure, um, it allows time for more air, which could be I've had dust particles get into a finished project that was sitting overnight did not appreciate that no um so it, it, everything's pro and cons everything's pro and cons so tanner actually brought our um drill kit in here and i'm gonna yeah. give you all the um i think this was the one so um the drill bit that i did use today was the 11 64ths I would probably, I think it's a good size to start out with, but no, like you saw, it took us a while to get that glitter in there. If I was doing it again, and I think this might be, cause I get my drill bits, <laughs> drill bits they're all together just yeah. randomly floating around. I would probably use the 15 64ths is the one that I would use. It's got, it's a little bigger of a hole, um, but it's still not so large that you take a chance of hitting that second wall inside the tumbler. Right. So 15 64ths is what I would use to drill that hole if I were doing it again. So now let's hop over. Um, so I have, actually I can already go ahead and tell you, I know that Spice Girls is Groovy Moves. Love Groovy Moves. It's Groovy Moves. Love Groovy Moves. So for those of you all who want to grab this, this is already a cut file, um, but I can show you guys how I added pumpkin over Spice Girls. Um, and as you can see, I actually ended up taking the word girl and spacing out the letters a little more than I did spice. That way it fit within there, but I can, we'll just go ahead. We'll add us a text. We're going to come up here cause I know groovy moves is on here. Now, just in case you all didn't know with the new system, the new update, you have to go to system fonts to find your maker's going to learn fonts. Love it. So we're just going to type in groovy moves, groovy, and then. I'm going to add spice and then girl underneath here. So as you can see, this does not look like this right now. What you can do is we're going to take this, we're going to go to advance, ungroup to lines, so that gives spice and girl separate. We're then going to take 
select the word girl and we're going to give it some more letter spacing. So we're going to stretch that out because I want this closer to the word spice. But if you see, if I didn't space that out, it's going to hit that P. So that's why I spaced that out. So we're going to go up to letter spacing some more, space it out just a hair more, and then, and this is going to be really a personal preference, how far you want it apart, how close you want the word Spice Girl. So you can see that's pretty, pretty close to where I had that. Now, the word pumpkin, I welded that, and I cannot remember what font I use, but guess what? We can use any font we want. We're just going to get us, grab us a cursive font. We're going to go to system fonts and we are going to look. Addie Kate looks pretty good. Let's work with Addie Kate. So this is not the exact font that I use, but I'm going to show you how I added the pumpkin and it goes through the word spice. So we're just going to type pumpkin. Look at this. We're going to size this now, down. Now, what font is that? That's Addie Kate. Wow. That's not the font right, that I right, use right, right. there. I love both of them, though. But we are going to size this down so that it sits over spice. Love now, let's it. change the color so you can see how it sits over spice. Um, you can see when we'll zoom in. Let's zoom in. So, what we're going to do now to get, if you can see, there is space between the eye, the dot of the eye, and the pumpkin. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the word pumpkin, and I'm going to create an offset on this. So it always pops up 0.25 offset. That's completely too big for what we're wanting. You can use this bar to size up and down. I think it's more precise if you use the, um, if you just type in the numbers. So we're actually gonna do a point, let's start with a point zero four and see where we're at. So that's a little um, small. Let's go to a point oh five, see what that looks like. I like that better. So we're going to apply that offset. Now you can see, we're gonna zoom in even more so you guys can see it a lot better you can see that that offset runs through that eye. What we're gonna do, I'm going to select, I'm gonna pull it up just a little bit so it doesn't touch the S. What we are now going to do, I'm going to select the text Ooh. offset that I put on pumpkin. Right. And then I'm going to select the word spice. Okay. Uh, this is like advanced cricket training, y'all. So we have our two layers selected. Now what we're going to do is we're going to slice that. So it looks like pumpkin and oil went away. Don't worry. Now I'm going to take that offset away. I'm going to take this slice result away and that one. And wow. boom. Look at that. Everyone is complimenting your amazing training, Lauren. They are loving it. Thank you, thank you, thank you for this. It is so good. Absolutely. And what I love about this is it doesn't have, I mean, you can do this with so many different yeah. things. It really gives... I just love the look that it gives. I love it. So now, so we can add our offset to the whole thing, I'm going to select all of this because this is where I want it to be. And I'm going to, um, you can weld it or you can attach it for right now. Um, I would go ahead, let's go ahead and weld it together. So that is going to make it all one color. So we're going to select it. I'm gonna change it back over to this orange, beautiful orange color. And then I'm going to add an offset on the whole thing. Now remember, I had the 0.05 offset before, so we're gonna up that offset. We're gonna try 0.15 and see what that looks like. Ooh. Now, here is where you want to make sure that your outside edges can, or you don't have to. I thought it looked better where my outside edges connected. So the 1-5, the R and the L offset doesn't touch here, and this doesn't touch right here. So I'm gonna go up to a 0.18. We'll see what that looks like. Still needs just a little bit more. Let's go to 0.2. Boom. Now they're all, oh no, they're not. See this, this down here, it still, it, get, it gets me every time. Let's go to 0.21. Now it's touching, okay? This on the inside doesn't matter. We just need this whole outside connected. So now we're going to apply that. 
Then we're going to have our weld result selected. We're going to hit contour and then we're going to hide all contours so that it is one perfect layer on Boom. the inside. You just got to see that sticker design like yes. no other. But Lauren, let's say that I already want the pumpkin spice girl. I know like this design is perfect. Uh -huh. I want this exact one. How do I get that? If you want this exact one, you don't want to go through designing. What you're going to do, you're going to hop over to makersgonnalearn.com. You're going to click on the cut files and then I will show you where this is at. Mm -hmm. We're going to search pumpkin spice. So we have it the best of both worlds. You just got yes. to see how you could design your very own or you can grab the cut file that will be automatically designed for you. Oh, and there it Pumpkin is. Pumpkin Spice Yay. Girl. Boom. It's already done for you. This Download is just, it if you don't it. like this font and you want to use a different font, I wanted to make sure you guys knew that you can. Yes. And look at the website. We're not signed in right now. So you can browse oh, yeah. all the cut files without even being a member. So if you're on the fence, I just want to encourage you, go over there, check out the cut files, check out the fonts and get ready to know all the things you get access to as soon as you say yes. So we'd love to have you as a member. It's so good. Absolutely. Um, I love all the detailed information for this training. Y'all, this should be like a, like a $27 masterclass, right? Like there's like <laughs> three different projects going on today. We really it's so are. Y'all, it's, it's almost one o'clock. I'm trying to hurry. I'm trying, <laughs> I promise. So we have our Maker 3. Um, we are going to select Make It. I'm going to kick the drill over real quick, uh -oh. and I'm going to grab a mat. a mat. So once we click make it, I'm going to start out with my gold layer. So this is going to be my base layer. I'm going to stick it down, burnish it down onto our mat. Now I will say this gold, I am obsessed with. I love it. Now where'd like, you get it? It has a leaf pattern on it. Um, I'm wanting to say that this is from 143, and I'm pretty sure it's linked. Actually, I know it's linked. Love it. It is their texture. It's under their textured vinyl. So you can find that at 143. It's linked down below. It's linked down below. We love us some 143. And I'm trying to, you know what, we'll just do it this way. I realize that I have something on my hands, and it's smearing on this, but it's okay. <laughs> so now we are going to click continue. Um, we are connected should be there we go this is just going to um we're just going to cut this on a premium vinyl um not a big deal we're going to do default pressure we're going to load this into our mat and then we're going to let this cut now while that is starting to cut i'm going to grab my cricut mini press because did you all forget that we are um, actually going to be putting heat transfer vinyl on permanent. Yes. It's one of those things like, there's so many levels to this project that I keep forgetting uh, what we're doing. So I'm going to put my mini press on a heat setting of two. We're gonna let that heat up while this cuts. And I'm going to move my cup before it, um, before it knocks it off. I just now realized that. So our Cricut is cutting our material. Now let's go, while that's cutting, let's talk about our whipped cream real quick. Ooh, let's see that on the overhead. Let, let's, let's get it. I mean, this this looks like real whipped cream. Like you need to eat it before it's a go milk. Yes. So <laughs> let's talk about our whipped cream. I love, love, love this. Um, and it is definitely a um, just a little decorative something that you can put on top of your cups. Um, like I said earlier, we actually attached our whipped cream with the um, UV resin to this other cup. Just know that, you know, this is not something you can put in your dishwasher. This is literally for decorative purposes only. But if you don't feel comfortable putting this, or attaching this to your cup, I have made one already. And all y'all, you can just take it on and off and just set it on the top um, for decorative purposes Love and then it. take it off when you're ready to use the cup. Yeah. So we're gonna show you how to do that. Um, now that this is cut, we're going to take our HTV. And we're actually, jump over to share screen. One thing you wanna make sure, 
So we didn't mirror this on our um, canvas before we put it on there. You don't want to mirror your permanent vinyl, so your base layer you're not going to mirror, but you're gonna make sure you come in here and edit this and mirror this one because we are cutting it with HTV. So now that we've got that, we are going to do the everyday iron-on setting, and then we are going to put our HTV onto now, our Now the main mat. reason we're using HTV instead of permanent vinyl today is because we didn't have the shade of permanent vinyl that Lauren wanted yeah. for today's project. So you're gonna to get to see how easy it is to kind of mix some HTV with this permanent gold, um, you know, uh, gold. <laughs> Permanent gold, vinyl. Yeah, gold permanent vinyl, which mm -hmm. is like textured. It's kind of like fabric-y. You're going to get to see how the heat transfer vinyl adheres to it. It actually is going to turn out great. It's going to feel really good. As you can see, this is if you're selling these, this is a pretty big investment time-wise. So you're going to see um, that there's a lot of supplies and things. So again, it's over. This is not a $20 tumbler. This is going to definitely be you know upwards of double that. Oh, yeah, um, for sure. Like that. So one thing that, another thing that I love, it was part, it like I did, we didn't have the right color, um, but I also love the feel of the um, HTV on top yeah. of permanent. And this would be great just to sell as stickers too. Oh my gosh, would that not because be an the, you, It's sticker. like you can't feel it. Mm -mm. And I love that about it. I it's love awesome. that you, once you get, once we get the HTV on there, like you're not gonna be able to feel the difference. <laughs> um, can't find the Starbucks coupon on the Facebook page. Sue, so just head over. It's not on the Facebook page. You've got to be in our member group. So there's yeah. a difference between the page and the group. Um, so head over to the group. It is over there for you, my friends. Um, you can see it. I'll, let me, Sue, you know what? Let me see if I can tag you. Yeah. Let me see if I can tag you, Sue. Okay, one other thing that we need to talk about. This is a lot. I just tagged you, Miss Sue. This is the extra. Let's go overhead. I did make some polymer clay sprinkles, y'all. Lauren loves <laughs> sprinkles and Lauren loves glitter. So whipped cream. <laughs> um, so this is, I, we're not gonna go into a extreme detail on how to make these. Um, I link the polymer clay down below. All you have to do is roll your polymer clay out into a very thin, um, as you can see, it was a very, very thin um, piece, kind of like you snake it out. You're going to bake that clay at 215 degrees for 15 minutes. Okay. Okay, and then once that's done, all you do is you take it and you just break it. You pop it and make little sprinkles. Yeah. Super easy. Um, but we're not going to go into a lot of detail for that because we really don't have time. So now that that HTV is cut, I'm going to grab my scissors and we're going to weed this. And this is super quick. It doesn't take long at all. We love weeding HTV too because it's really, really good. Oh, yeah. oh yay, Sue, you got your tag. Woohoo. I okay. love it. So now I'm just going to come in here. Could you use real sprinkles? Megan, you probably could because we talked about. If it's about, just for decorative use. Yeah, you probably could. The polymer yeah. clay is like probably the the longest lasting, best looking, right? Like it's yeah. the, it's the best. Um, and just to make sure. So it's it's up to you. That would be more personal preference. Yeah, once again, this whipped cream, it is literally, if you just wanna be a little extra, it is going to be for decorative use only. So it's not like anything is going to go in a mouth. Um, so if you wanted to use uh, real sprinkles, I say go for it if you don't have any polymer clay laying around. Let's see, we're gonna get this weeded out. So we have our pumpkin spice girl weeded out. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to place this on my offset. Oh, I like using HTV too because you have time to move it around, make sure it's perfectly centered. Yes. So awesome. Mini easy press on a heat setting of two. Um, and then we're just gonna press it on there. So Ty's wondering what the um, whipped cream is made out of. The whipped cream, if you'll give me just a second, I will show you. And the coupon for the coffee is while supplies last. So what happens is we load up a Starbucks gift card, a few hundred dollars. Say thank you to the members. Y'all. You use it and when um, it expires, when it runs out, it runs out. I'll try to reload it probably like one more time or two times today. Are y'all seeing this? Ooh. 
What? Love it. Love it. So, Ty asked what the whipped cream is made out of. The whipped cream is made out of the DAP Fast and Final Lightweight Spackling. Love it. It's my favorite when it comes to like the faux whipped cream. You can use this for so many different things though, especially crafting. This is a very good thing to have on hand. You may not use it all the time, but it's still very good to have on hand right. for crafting. Yeah. Love it for crafting. So if you want to grab that cup. Yeah, oh, I forgot our cups outside. We're letting that resin cure we it. We are letting that resin cure. The sun um, cure And it. we're gonna talk about the whipped cream real quick. So we'll go to one. As you can see, I already have some of these whips, the smaller ones already made. Now the reason that I have, wow, I'm obsessed. We'll show, we'll show that in a minute. So good. The reason that I have the smaller ones pre-made is because if you see, this is a very large piece of that, a, a very large amount of the fast and final. If you make this all at one time, what's gonna happen is this middle is just going to fall down. It's not gonna dry, it's gonna fall down, and it's just gonna be a big old mess. So, my suggestion is if you are wanting to make these, batch it. Do a lot at one time. As you can see, I've got like three or four more yeah. down in the bucket. So I made a lot of these at one time. And I'm gonna show you guys the technique. We're gonna start out with a popping bag. Oh, snap. Now, I have done a lot of cake decorating popping before. A lot of people like to use the pieces that screw on. You put your um, popping tip in there and screw it on. I just like putting mine through the bag. We're gonna see about how far down. Let's go over, are we overhead? Let's go overhead. So we're gonna see about how far down this tip can go where it would be secure. So we're gonna cut it about right there. So. You do need to do this with each of your tips. So we're gonna cut it right under there. We're gonna take our scissors. We're gonna go ahead, cut the tip of this popping bag off. And then we are going to add in our popping tip. Wow. Push it down to the bottom. I bet you all didn't think you were gonna learn some like cake decorating and That's some right. cupcake decorating. And then we're just gonna pull it through right here Ooh. until it's tight. And yeah. that way you don't have to have that piece that screws on. Uh. Look at that. Done. Ready to ready to pop. Ready to pop. You Whatever you want. You can also use a Ziploc bag. Whichever have one you have there. The Ziploc bag, you think, I mean, it's a little, like, Ziploc it's really good. Ziploc bag works great. It's really good. Ziploc bag works great. So, I have a piece of freezer paper here, as you can see. Um, I have taken the lid of my cup and taken a, a pen and I've drawn around it so I know how large the cup lid Smart. is. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're going to fill our popping bag with our fast and funnel. Now, do you need me to grab you something to scoop it in there with? I've got a spoon right oh, here. perfect. I already grabbed that. Woohoo! So we're gonna take our little plastic spoon. Now, does it use a lot of this stuff? Like, um, do you need a lot? Like, tell us what, what your thoughts are. My thoughts are, if you are, I would fill this popping bag full um, just because we're going to start with the little whips. The popping bag full will probably make four to five of these little whips. Okay. And then from there, um, it'll take to get to this amount, it'll take about where the max is. I'd say if you filled it a little bit above the max, that's going to, that's how much it's going to take to fill the rest of this. Cool. Um, so now we're just going to keep on filling this. This thing's pretty full, so I'm gonna start working this spackling down my popping bag. Now, Lauren, I got a good question for you. Okay. We've had some friends say, are you using a foam ball? Let's talk about it. Do you need a foam ball at the base of this? Because I don't see one on the table. There is not one on the base of this. Now, I have seen where people do use the foam ball, and if you are taking it on and off, that would be perfect. Um, I'm not personally using one, um, because when I first did this project, I thought that um, when I first did the project, I attached this to the cup lid. And then once I realized, hey, there might be some people that don't want this on their cup lid. Yeah. They may want to be able to take this on and off. Um, so that's why I've, I had already created the whips. So right. you can use the foam ball and just place it on, take it on and off your, the top of your cup. This is just a different way. 
Foam balls are great. What you would do is you would cut that foam ball in half, set it down, whip around it. This Love way it. you have an option to set your straw through it if you want to, is the way that I'm showing you. So, see, the straw comes out. So to do the small whips, I'm just going to do one and I'm going to show you and then I'm going to show you how to do the rest of it. Love it. We're going to start out and I'll we'll start here in this corner. For the small whips, I'm going to start with a circle around like this and then we're going to bring it up and push it down. Up, push it down. That's beautiful. Up and then push it back down. Is this really the flick of the wrist, Lauren? It's a lot of the flick of the wrist. <laughs> now you can stop right there if you want to. However, if you want to add the place through the middle of this, what I have done is I just have a paper straw and all I'm going to do is come in here and add a hole right here. Wow. So that it can go on around. So I That's can stick incredible. the straw through there. That's so that incredible. opens that up. And then if you have an old straw, you can use an old straw um, to make it a little bigger. But what I just did is I just moved this around back and forth. And I swear I think these lights are melting this. Oh, I bet so. <laughs> I bet so. Because yeah. it's, it's kind of falling very, flat. But it is kind of cool in this room, too. So, yeah. like, the, the lights are the probably the heating source. Yeah. Um, it's okay. So, you just want to be careful. It's okay. So, now, once this is dried, you're going to let your first whip sit and dry for no less than 24 hours. That's why I say do, like, four or five of them at right. one time. Um, once, that, once those have dried, like this one has... We're placing it in the middle of the size of our cup. Okay. What we're going to do now, we're going to, this is just, um, I'm going to move my spackling down some more. And we're going to twist as we go. We are going to come around here and we're just going to pop around. Now you can twist, you can do um, really cute little designs with this. I just like the basic star tip look so i'm all literally all i'm doing is just around my center whip trying my best to stay even with it to the top and then push it up and there you go how about it that is it now what you're going to do while this is wet if you want to add your sprinkles you're going to pop those bad boys in there um it's kind of hard i really like to use which I've uh, taken them out, I had to use them this morning. I really like to use my needle nose tweezers to kind of pick each individual piece up and place it where I want it so I don't mess with the, um, the look of that star tip. I love using our tweezers. So you're just gonna add this around. I'm not gonna really go into a lot of detail. While it's still wet, uh -huh. if you wanna be extra, you can Grab add your, your cinnamon. Spice pumpkin spice whatever yes, we're gonna cinnamon. add a little bit of cinnamon to it make it look pretty i love it and then this is where this white glitter comes in oh we're gonna sprinkle the top of this with white glitter and i really think that it just makes this whipped cream pop so kathy asked uh, i've seen that a few times kathy sorry we haven't got to address it yet um have you tried the glitter from hobby lobby so i would say almost all glitters made the same what we love about StarCraft is the variety. Yes. If you've not seen the lineup of glitter from StarCraft, they're taking over the glitter world. Go check it out. It's linked down below, um, so you will, you'll love it. Um, but I think you'll rock. If you want Hobby Lobby glitter, use Hobby Lobby glitter. We were recommending Dollar Tree glitter. So I mean, listen, what you I got. found a pack of glitter that was almost identical to the StarCraft glitter. That's just if you're balling on a budget yes. and you don't want to buy a big thing of orange because you know like... It takes up a lot of space. It does. It really does. So, if once this is done, you let this sit for 24 hours, you can be done there. You have your whip. You can take it, which, by the way, guys, this is Look the cup, at the cup that, we that you made. all made. Let's go overhead. Y'all made that today. We How made do you all today. feel? Guys, this is the exact one that you and Lauren. We didn't even make. put our sticker on it. Not I just even. Didn't realize. Not even. Not even. There's even more. Look at that. So you got this sticker. Oh, snap. <gasps> guys, look at it. Boom. Look at it. 
Which oh here I goodness, am. I love it. I've got a little bit of a, we're going to fix this. Yeah. There's so many places that have glitter. Auntie Tay has been rocking glitter too. I mean, guys, glitter is, has so, there's so many. Like, there we I go. love it. Got it. Woohoo. And we made this today. So you can be done. We'll go, let's go to camera one if we're not there. You can be done um, here once it's dried. You can take your lid, place it on there just for decorations. We're not going to go into a ton of detail because it is 20 after 1. <laughs> if you want to apply it to the top of your cup, all I did was I came in here, UV resin on the top. I set it on top of the UV resin, turned it over, and I cured it from the bottom. Wow. That's it. And then I came in and just added a little bit of UV resin around it and cured it, and then I was done. Yeah, that was our idea. So to, to, to make this as permanent and sealed as possible, we thought... You know, obviously the UV resin to seal it, it's yes. clear. So that resin is going to be the best glue for you. It's resin. Let's come over and here. And then, you know, what you can do is for this, you know, the finish, finished one is add the UV resin all over it. Mm -hmm. So this is permanent. I mean, you can touch this. Yeah. You can, I mean, it's, it's firm. It's really, this is your best bet. And I would say this one right here. It's for personal use. Yeah, it's like, personal this is, use. You're going to take good care of her. Uh -huh. Handmade is hand washed. Um, I actually wouldn't. What I would do, if that was mine and I wanted to seal it, I probably wouldn't. I, I mean, you could probably hand wash it, but your main thing that's going to get dirty is the inside of your cup. Yeah. So I would just take it and wash the inside yeah. and not like wash this. But also, let's say you just want to make this because it's. It's amazing. It's adorable. It's adorable. And you can take this on and off. Now you can have your cup that you can wash. Um, your permanent glitter in your HTV can get, you know, hand washed wet. Yes. Like it's totally fine. Yes. Um, and you're going to have great results. It's going to be so fun. Look at this, guys. I mean, look at it. How yeah. amazing. Oh my goodness. What is this? All right. Well, today's project, y'all, is so good. And spoiler alert, we have a lot of it prepped. So it's gonna be great. Um, this is it, it's a reversible pillow. So this is one side. So this is like the fall, like I can put out some fall decor on my bench. I can put it on the front porch. And then, you know, there's times when you're like, Ugh, it's, it's two weeks before Halloween. What can I do to spook it up? Boom. You can spook it up with this. Is this not so fun? I love, love, love this. This is so, so fun. Um, so yeah, this is really fun. Your supplies are minimal today. So the supplies are minimal, minimal. Um, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Here's what we are gonna do. Here is what we got overhead. Today's supplies you will need for the pillow I've bought. You're gonna need a 12 by 24 mat. So you can see this is a pretty, pretty large um, image to put down. It's not hard at all. You'll be able to rock it. Here's the pillow that we're using. This is just a bas um, basically yours creatively crafted pillow cover, 12 inches by 20, 12 inches by 20. Um, so that's awesome. It, this is canvas. So you could dye this, you could do whatever you want to it. Um, we used um, our material just to cut this out, print and cut it. This is the D, um, this is, we're using the DTV today. So this is the DTV. You can use printable, um, you can use printable iron on whatever you want. Okay. Whichever you want. Um, so love that. I know everybody's got these in their craft stash. Pull one out, do this with me, um, and have fun with me. Um, I am on, we do not have a nanny on, uh, Fridays. So today, me, Courtney, and Lauren are working here at the house, um, hanging out with the babies, and Courtney's like cleaning the playroom, <laughs> and I was feeding the babies. I was um, giving them, giving them all of the baby food. So this is Easy Color DTV. So hold on, let me pull it over here. Ooh, <sighs> this isn't the studio, y'all. This is, this, is my, this is my home studio. Um, this is Easy Color DTV sent to us from our dear friends at Caesar. Thanks guys. Um, we love this stuff, it's really good. This is different than DTF. All right, y'all, DTV, um, no power needed. This is um, no powder. DTF uses powder. Watch Lauren's videos because they're mad scientists, not me, um, and it's super fun. So yeah, DTV, you get to use it kind of like um, you would printable 
heat transfer vinyl, but it's better, it's better. So yay, awesome, awesome, love it. Love the ability to use the pillow for an extended period of time. Honestly, let's say you're not into Halloween. I would do fall market, and then I would do on the other side, just like a Christmas one. So take this inspiration, work with it, make something awesome, and it's super, super fun, um, and it's incredible. So let's take a look at the share screen today. If you're not already a member of makersgonnalearn.com, you can become a member today. Um, I do need to download a font today, so I was like, you know what? We'll do it together. We will do it together. Um, our fall pillowcase is from Hobby Lobby. Y'all, I wanna show you, um, I wanna show you one of my favorite fonts and it's called Albuquerque. Um, Albuquerque is like a real deal, okay? This is one of my favorite, favorite fonts. And if you're a member, you can actually try the font out and make sure it's what you want. So this right here is super fun. Um, you could top out, you know, we're putting apples on here. So in the test your font area, you can see you can test that out, which is super fun. So we're just gonna click download now, and then it'll pop up in a zip file. Oh, Carol says, making myself not buy DTV until all the printable vinyl I have. Hey, that's awesome. Use it up. You will love this new product when you, when you get it. So we're just opening that font and we're gonna install it. Guys, super simple. You guys get over a thousand fonts in the membership. So download Albuquerque. You'll be able to use it. Um, and it's super, super fun. So yay, love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, and it's awesome. So that's what we needed. Now, if you go over here to Design Space, let's close out this and hop over to Design Space. You can see that we have um, we have quite a few different things. Lots of, looks like some of it's not loaded. There's so much. <laughs> um, I'm trying to see where we're at. So here we go. This is our first one. And this is our second one. So these are some fonts from Makers Gonna Learn, like Albuquerque. Um, if we go over to the website again and go over to cut files, let's go over here. And yes, we did purchase the um, pillow cover at Hobby Lobby. Are fonts usable for selling crafts without violating copyrights? So Robin, if you're a member, you get a commercial license. So if you're an active member, you get that commercial license. So let's search for fall market and you'll see that. Da, 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 da. So you can see here's our design. So this is what we're using today. Um, it already has the pumpkins, the apples, the mums, the gourds. All of this is here on the cut file. You can download this, upload it, and you'll see you don't even need the Albuquerque font. I wanted to show you that Albuquerque is the font that is used here. Um, in case you are like, oh my goodness, I need to change this out, you can go ahead and change that out for Albuquerque. So this is the two, this is the two designs. And what I wanna show you all, so remember, here's our design that we downloaded and brought into Cricut. All we did to get our skeleton in the same little area, we took this fall market and we duplicated it. And then we were able to go ahead and go to contour. And we just contoured out, you know, all of these layers um, just to give it just that outline, um, which is really handy. So if you've never used contour, I mean, y'all are missing out. It's so helpful. It's so easy um, to use. And you guys just go through super easily, hide all these layers. Look at this. I love it. Have you guys been loving following? We have been having a blast in office um, with this time. Over the weekend, you all are gonna see some incredible, incredible videos. 
So just get ready for that. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. All right, let's see what happens here. Oops. Oh no, I brought it all back. Oh my goodness, look at me. I clicked hide all contour, then I said, I did the other button. So look at that. Well, you guys got to see how we did that. Just contour out all of that, and then you would bring in your skeleton cut files. So if we go over here and we go to cut files, and you can search for the skeleton. This, what we're using, I'll show you here in a second. One moment. If I can spell, did not spell that. Do, 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 do. Let me correct that. So this is skeleton. This is kind of how I work. I go from our website to Design Space quite a bit, um, and it's really helpful. So you can see we have the laying skeleton. Um, this is a little dance called like dabbing. This is what Lauren used um, on a screen printing video. It's so fun. So you can see lots of skeleton options. And then here you have our fall market. So I'm gonna delete this one out. So now that you see how we kind of set these two up, I do wanna let you all know we measured our uh, pillowcase and it's 12 by 20. So what we did was we were able to do um, 18 by 10.5. So 18 by 10.5. So it's pretty big. It's quite a bit on there um, and it's super fun. Lauren says her favorite way to do this. Thank you, Lauren. You can go to shapes and this is so fun. You can take a square. This was a rounded square. You can unlock it. And then what you'll be able to do is just cover this up over our area. And then right here, look at this. Take these two layers and we're gonna do something called slice. So click slice and look what happens, y'all. This is crazy. Boom, we can pull this out. Ta-da! And then here is the fall market, which I totally just used the one that we're using today. Um, but yes, you all can see we can take that and whatnot. So yeah, super easy if you wanna be able to do that really quickly. Um, that is awesome. I should have duplicated it and not used the one we're going to use for our next part in our project. But since we have visuals, what I was gonna show you is that we have a bunch of cut files that are really fun um, and they're kind of watercolored. So what we did was with our fall market, we added one of our watercolor files and we made it a print and cut. And when we did the print and cut, we put it on the DTV. So this is the DTV. This is super fun. And you guys can take a look here um, and see how great it is. So yay, I love it. Let's go overhead. Um, so we will be taking this watercolor file from Makers Gonna Learn, and we used it on the DTV. Um, and look, look at this, look at this. It looks so good, beautiful. Oh, okay. So how many of us have never worked with heat transfer vinyl today? If you've never worked with heat transfer vinyl, let me know in the comments. We're using the mini easy press to level two. So we're gonna use level two. Oh my goodness, some of us are going out of town. Hey, from Illinois, working different crafts this weekend. Yay, you guys are so fun. That's awesome, I love it. Okay, before I open up my pillow, I really quickly just wanna make sure you all understand how we use heat transfer vinyl. Just in case, little refresher, Connie says she's never used it. So we're gonna help Connie out. Connie, if you're not a member, definitely consider membership because we'll help you master your entire Cricut. But um, this is what heat transfer vinyl is. Oh my goodness, Pam, Nora, there's a lot that's never used heat transfer vinyl and Ty says it's her favorite. So that's super fun. So um, it comes with transfer tape. You always put it shiny side down. So this is the dull side and this is the shiny side. So this is what you would put down on your mat to cut and then you would cut it and these projects take quite a bit to weed. So we pre-weeded it and cut it for you all today to respect our time on the show at Halloween. And then you peel it up and look at this. This is your big old project that we'll be able to put down first. 
which is super exciting. So that one you just measure, you put, um, you cut it on the heat transfer vinyl settings and so much like that. I've had a lot of friends that have asked me where I got this. This is um, again from Hobby Lobby and this is before the discount y'all, such a good one. So here's our little project pillow. And I like to kind of just go through and make sure we iron it out. I want this to be flat. You know, you just want to iron it a little bit. I love using the mini easy press to iron. Um, they're great to have on hand. This is one of my favorites. So if you're new to the channel, let me know. So if there's anyone that's new to heat transfer vinyl, you may be new to Makers Gonna Learn. I'm the founder here at Makers Gonna Learn. So just let us know if you're new. I'd love to give you a warm welcome. Our entire team is so excited to serve you. And I know your fellow makers here on the channel are just thrilled you're here. So let us know. Um, I'm teaching a workshop on Tuesday about selling your crafts. I've linked it, but I'll drop that link again. And if there's anybody that's like, you know what, this weekend is my time for membership. There's two awesome offers. You can become a monthly member for half off, or you can grab a year membership for $30 off and get a ticket to our year member summit. So look at this. We can line this up super quickly. And you can see the sizing was not hard at all, at all, at all, at all. And you can put this down here. And then we're just going to start in one corner. And I'm using what's an easy press mat. So this is an easy press mat. They're recommended. They're not necessary, but they do help if you're going to use this as your um, main uh, like device to heat set. Look at this. So yeah, the, the using the mini easy press is like, our entire team has been in love with this thing since we got it. And we it originally was like, why do we need this? And then we got it and we're like, okay, we're sold. Do, 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 do. So this is it. I mean, it's not hard at all to use the heat press or the mini easy press or you know any presses. What will happen for our newbies using heat transfer vinyl, it becomes some bubbles and you can see the bubbles um, just kind of uh, let you know that it's infused into the fabric so that when you peel this sticky transfer sheet off, it has adhered to the fabric. Whoops. Peeled that off a little too fast. Oh no. Oh no. Got a little, got a little excited. Do, 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 do. If you don't pull it as fast as I did, you're usually able to, like this area is not down. So then I can take it and go like one, two, three, four. Let that cool for a second. Let that cool for a second. Help this little area out and then peel again. And see, look, this area right there is perfect. Look at that. Lost a collarbone, literally lost a collarbone. <gasps> Yolanda, you totally can use whatever heat press you have. Do not feel pressured to use one. What we can do too is flatten this back out. Sometimes I like to grab a, another tool or something. And look, we're gonna flatten that back out. Look at that, just flatten it out a little bit. And then what we're gonna do is grab a piece of this and we're going to place it back down so oops. we're going to place it down and we're going to grab the easy press again and look we can fix any imperfection here no big deal at all that did have to hurt <laughs> beautiful okay so we, we were able to repair that i sometimes craft a little too fast which sometimes hurts you. I'll be honest, like slow and steady is the best way to do it. So now what I want to encourage you to do is to, well, first of all, I love that the pillow insert is on this side. So it's not on the bottom, so it can be either way. So now what we're gonna do is flip it just like this and iron it again, and we're gonna do the other side. 
So it's really easy to make these reversible um, pillows. If you guys have never thought about doing a reversible pillow, I highly, highly want to encourage you to try it out. It is super fun. Can you use HTV on any type of pillowcase or is there a type of fabric you suggest? Um, what I recommend is for a lot of our friends to use at least something with like 30 to 40% cotton. Cotton does really well um, on HTV. There's other special HTV for flex more flexible material and things like that, so it's super fun. Um, Diane Lauren is actually here working, and then Alicia doesn't work on Fridays, so she has a baby um, herself, so she spends that day with her baby. So here we go. Here is our fall market, and we're just going to place that down. I love this grid. I love this grid outline. It's so much fun. And then you can lay this down. It lines up really well. Um, and things so it looks like this it can go further up in this one side so beautiful 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 okay look at that oh i make reversible door hangers yes they're so fun and i think for storage like you said like it's very handy so look so this is where the dtv will go um after we do the heat transfer so get excited for that Yay! Awesome. So we're just going to repeat this process. This is not hard at all. Look at this. Look at this. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Look at that. Yay! I watched a video yesterday where Tanner taught me to use the custom settings on my Explorer 2 so I don't forget to change the dial. <gasps> Y'all, it's so good. Okay, Kathy, I have not opened that machine yet. I need to do it. Um, my schedule has just been crazy, crazy, crazy. Okay, so look, we're peeling back this. You can use transfer tape on this if you want. You don't have to, but you can. Um, what I'm going to do is position it here. And then this is what we used is called Easy Color DTV. Easy Color DTV. Tanner, do you, these wash up good being on canvas? They do wash pretty well. Um, I haven't had any issues, but I don't wash a ton of them. Do you think infusible ink sheets will work with this cut fall? Um... It would be really hard to weed that. I just want you to think about the weeding and infusible ink sheets are pretty, they kind of have a mind of their own. I'm not going to lie. They kind of have a mind of its own. Um, so you just want to be careful with that. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I haven't seen this used without a transfer sh sheet. So I want to let you all know like what it would do. So see, I just stuck that there and it kind of looks a little, um, like it's going to not do well. So what I'm going to do here is grab a piece of transfer tape and I really want to use um, a little a little sheet. Here's my Cricut. Here we go. Here's what I'm looking for. This is perfect. So this is a great to have on hand. You don't have to have one of these on hand, but they're great for when you're applying things like like this. So if anyone can remember what these are called, please drop it in the comments. I'm losing my mind on the name. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. What are these called, y'all? These are, <laughs> it's a sheet. <laughs> what is this? What is this sheet called? Oh my goodness, you guys, I'm losing my mind. What is this sheet called? I love having this here. I keep this on hand because if you are not using something, it's a Teflon sheet. Thank you all. I'm losing my, I'm losing my marbles, y'all. The Teflon sheet, Teflon. Yes, we love the Teflon, Teflon. So good. Teflon is great. <laughs> Cricut may not have them anymore, but listen, 143 does. I mean, there's so many companies that have them for you all. So just grab you a Teflon. They're cheaper if you do not use 
one from, from, you know, Cricut. They don't have to be name brand. And Cricut just came out with a hot glue gun. What do we think about that? Are we here for it? Do we want to see it? I want to test it for you all. Ooh, look at this. We got to get this area down here. Teflon. Thank you. Teflon sheets. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so I don't know either, but have one serves the same purpose. Yeah, they're great. Um, I used to, again, not think you needed them, but as we work with more specialty material, I find that they're really handy. And look at how great that went on. I mean, guys, it's that simple to be able to do a project like that. Now we're having some questions about the Teflon sheet. So the Teflon sheet can work, um, like if I had this letter down here and I already threw away my transfer sheet, you can pull out your Teflon. Now I like to, when I'm laying my project down, I like to keep this right here to the side because you can redo this. So if my F started coming up, I could lay that back down and press it again. This is really handy um, and it's, it's great to use. But for this, it was already printed. I didn't feel comfortable putting something sticky onto that. So what we were able to do was pull out the Teflon sheet, which can you all believe I had one on hand in my craft room like crazy, but they're great to have. So there's Teflon. You can grab it from all sorts of places and it's really, really, really handy. And look y'all, I now have my keyboard back. My mouse is working again. Um, but yeah, super, super fun. Here's the one side and then you can flip it over and here's your skeleton side. Look at that. Now guys, we also want to let you all know you can get the pillow insert at Hobby Lobby 2. So you can get these at Hobby Lobby 2. Um, so that will work really well and it's really, really fun. So what do you all think? Is this like the printable transfer sheets? So Erica, this is um, Easy Color DTV. So let's just pull this out here. This is where you can use it and it makes printing simple. It's compatible with the wide variety of printers, vinyl cutters. So you can print and cut full color images, patterns, and even photos. Um, and here's the, here's the back. So look at this. This is what it looks like. It can be weeded, everything like that. We have some videos on this from a few weeks back. Go check that out. Um, but what I love is this cut file we paired it with. And this cut file um, is watercolor. So you get the watercolor look without having to watercolor, which is my type of crafting, if you know what I'm saying. So yay, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Here's what it will look like when you add your pillow, fall market, your spooky, spooky skeleton. These are so fun. Again, you could do the same thing with um, Christmas and fall or Christmas and Thanksgiving um, and all sorts of things. So yay, take a good look. Here's the skeleton side. Here's the fall side. This does use a lot of heat transfer vinyl. I will say that uses quite a bit of heat transfer vinyl um, and it's super fun. I don't have any All right, tell us what we need to know for today's following project. Okay, so I last minute put together a Dollar Tree version of this for you all, um, or just like a Dollar Tree option, I guess. Yeah. Um, we are gonna be using fake pumpkins or faux pumpkins, they're actually called Funkins, which is so cute. You can actually carve these pumpkins. They're fun. Like you can carve them and keep them mm -hmm. every year, which mm -hmm. I really like. Um, so they're a little bit more pricey, but like right. at the same time, I don't know. I just really like them. They're good quality. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to also be showing you all how to do a bow, like a fall bow. Bows? I've been crafting for over a decade, and bows still just make me nervous. And I realize mm -hmm. if I'll just do it, there's nothing to be nervous about. Right. But it makes me just not do it. Well, they look daunting. And so yeah. I think when you break it down into small steps, it's a lot easier. Yeah. But that's what we're here for. Woohoo! So well, should I'm we ready. start? Let's jump into okay, it. Okay, well, oh, let's my goodness. Go. Let's go ahead. Let me show you guys what we're making first of all. If you didn't see the thumbnail, this is what we're making. Uh, are you kidding me? This is so yes. cute. So we're going to be doing a water slide decal using Makers Gonna Learn fonts and patterns today. Love it. I'm going to show you guys some little hacks in design space, making a bow. 
Um, I brought some Dollar Tree options in here for you all, so it's gonna be a good time. Um, so let's go ahead and go over the supplies. So we'll go over ahead and this is all you're gonna need. Now I've got like a plethora of ribbon over here because I got a so little crazy. I love fall colors, so like I couldn't pick a ribbon. Um, but the first thing you're gonna need, obviously, is water slide decal paper. This is the Sunny Scopa. I've used this, and then I'm trying to think, Lauren, what's that brand right there beside you? What is that brand called? Spin it. That one is really good too. Um, those are the two that I use the most here. Tanner, do you have any water slide that you specifically no. use? I mean, I started with the We Are Memory Keepers water slide. Oh, yeah. Um, that's like kind of like my tried and true. Yeah. But honestly, I've never had an issue with any water slide. Me neither. That's why I haven't had like a favorite or one that's significantly worse. Um, so yeah, that's the one that I'm using today. Um, you're going to need some semi-gloss clear sealant. I don't know if it necessarily has to be glossy, um, but it does need to be a clear sealant, and I will explain how that works. I've got a standard to light grip mat. Um, I have obviously a pumpkin. You're going to need your fall bow options. All of these are Dollar Tree. Are you kidding me? Like, those are my favorite, and the colors are so pretty. These are Hobby Lobby. Um, these stems are also Hobby Lobby, so you can use any fall stems if you've already got some on hand. Love it. Um, you can just kind of throw any fall colors in there. Even just greenery would be really cute. And then I've got a measuring tool, a weeding tool, and some scissors. And also a hot glue gun. So we've got the Lynn Lily hot glue gun here. Um, and that is pretty much it. It's not a whole lot of ingredients. That's awesome. I yeah. also want to let you all know, um, or let Alicia know, that Miss Carol Stanford's privately messaged me. It was like, what about a craft using a pattern and like incorporate sublimation? So today's training, you could actually use, if you're not interested mm -hmm. in water slide, you, you could take this exact training and turn it into a really fun sublimation project. You literally can. Oh, so, I'm about, Carol, awesome. I'm about to make your day. Happy birthday <laughs> week. Happy birthday week to you, Carol. Oh, it's so Okay, fun. so after we get our supplies together, let's go to Design Space. And I'm actually going to go to our website. I'm just going to show you all what patterns I use and yes. what fonts. Um, we are having the fall sale. If you need to grab your membership for $30 off, use that yeah. coupon code FALL. Um, with the year membership. So you'll and be able to if grab you're, that. if you sign up to be a year member, you're going to get to be at our October um, summit. Our member only summit, our yearly members are receiving an invitation to that. And we have lots of fun Christmas yes. crafts planned, which I'm super excited about. It is so good. Yeah. So um, I'm going to be using the pattern fall leaves here. And someone was asking, what is water slide paper? So I will go into more detail in just a minute. Let me show you guys what files I use really quick, and then I'll explain it as I go. So I've got the pattern of fall leaves right here. So it's not orange whenever you go to download it. If you're mm -hmm. looking for an orange, we're going to be doing that in Design Space. And then I'm going to be using the font Conscience. Or, yeah, Conscience is how it's pronounced. Um, and it's just like a block font. I will say whenever you're doing water slide, especially if you're doing you don't really want to do anything with a lot of detail. So like, I'm not going to want to pick a super detailed script font to try to water slide on my pumpkin. And whenever I start putting this letter on here, y'all are going to be like, I know what you mean now, because you just want to have a lot of edges to, that's not the way I want to say it. You want to have a lot of area to move around. If you've got a lot of fine edges, it's going to be really hard for you to get a good smooth finish. Um, so this is the font we're using. And then we're going to need to go into Design Space. So I already downloaded that font. And I am just going to make a text box. And we're going to use the letter S today. And let me just stretch this out. Now, what you're going to want to do before you decide how big you want it is measure your pumpkin. So let's go overhead and we'll measure our pumpkin really quick. Is that good? Can you all yes, see right here? look at this. Now, I will say, Alicia, when you presented this idea. Mm -hmm. I was nervous. I remember. Because water slot is finicky. Mm -hmm. It is forgivable, but it finicky. Is. Right. And this is a pretty textured pumpkin that you're about to measure. So yeah, wow. it is. And I'll say if you try to go in here with just regular vinyl, um, 
because it is got lots of ridges, it's not going to do good. And I actually tried to do vinyl on this one before the live, and it was fugly. It right. was not cute. So just make sure. Um, that's the reason that I like these because they're not so rigid. But you could do a water slide on this. It's just going to be a lot more finicky. And when I start applying the water slide, you all will really be able to tell. So I'm going to measure the area that I want the pumpkin. So I'm not going to measure from up here all the way down. I'm just measuring how tall I want it. So I'm going to leave a little bit of space at the top and at the bottom. And I don't want my letter to be bigger than seven inches. Beautiful. So I've got seven inches there. So let's go back into design space and I'm going to resize my design. Let's see. My height is going to go to seven inches. And then we can go ahead and change our font. So if you go into design space and you're not able to find the font that you downloaded, make sure to save your project and reload it. And then check your system fonts. A lot of times when you open the font box, you're not able to see it right here because you're under the Cricut fonts. But if you go to system fonts, you can see it right here. And oops, if I could spell it right, you guys. There it is. Now, what so, font is this? This is Conscience. Conscience. I okay, really guys. like this font. I love it. Uh-oh, what did I do? It looks very classy. It is. And I want to show you why, like, if you do... If we changed this font and we were like, oh, I really want to do like a really pretty script font because in my brain, I also would love to do that. Right. I want to show you like whenever you go to do a water slide, everything is literally sliding around on water. Yes. So if you're doing a font like this, all these mm. little ends right here on the S are going to be really hard to maneuver whenever you're trying to apply it to your actual pumpkin. So that's why I'm doing something a little bit safer here, but still really classy and elegant. Love it. So is everybody with me so I'm, far? Alicia, I'm with you. Okay. Like okay. this is rocking. We're I, here. I love, I mean, the best tip I've got so far is my font needs to coordinate with my project, meaning these bulkier fonts are going to be best, mm -hmm. especially with the pattern. Let's talk about a thicker font as well for pattern. So if you're doing yes. print and cut, this is a great font for print and cut because you can actually see the pattern. Right. Alicia, can I also, I don't want to take away too much. I no. want you all to think about when you're cutting out vinyl as well. Mm -hmm. If you are shopping, I find it so fun to shop and purchase pattern vinyl. But from a practicality standpoint, very far and few in between projects actually allow for me to utilize the pattern. Right. Vinyl. So you want to be careful about how much you're buying and things like that. So this font, again, would be great for pattern vinyl and things like that. Yeah, and whenever you're using this thicker font, you're able to see more of the pattern. So if you're using a dainty font, which I don't recommend for water slide, right. um, you're not going to be able to see this beautiful fall leaf pattern um, yes. in the background. So no skinny fonts, no fonts with tails, as Carol said, yes. when it comes to the water slide, and no skinny fonts when it comes to print then cut, pattern vinyl, yeah. or pattern water slides. Right, right. So I went ahead and pulled a square into design space. I've got both of my patterns here. I'm sorry, I've got my pattern and my solid color square. I'm gonna bring our pattern to the front just so you can see. Um, whenever you're picking the color that goes behind this, you want to be able to make sure that your pattern is actually going to show up. So if I wanted to come over here, I can just select any of the colors that we already offer or that Design Space already offers, or I can go down to Advance and kind of select a color that I would prefer. So I'm thinking we'll do like a burnt orange color. This is like my one of my favorite fall colors, this burnt orange. I oh, think it's, it's so pretty. It's so classy. Perfect it's like a terracotta, yes. you could call it. <laughs> and then I am just going to, what I'm going to do next, there's a couple different ways you can do this. This is how I prefer to do it. So I'm going to bring my S to the front. I'm going to bring that to the front. I am going to duplicate and I'm going to slice an S out of both of these. People are loving your shirt, Alicia. Oh, thanks. I made it <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do now is bring one of the S's over our background color. I'm going to select them both. So click and drag to select them both. And I'm going to slice it. So we're not going to need any of this business. We just need this guy. 
and then I'm going to go right here and do the same thing. So you're going to click and drag, select both options, slice it out, and then once it slices, we're just going to need the patterned S. So delete that, delete that, and oh, we can't do that because oh, there it goes, there it goes. Okay, I was like, <laughs> you're what like, did where I do? Is my design? Um, and then so you've got these two S's, and it looks crazy. What I'm going to do is click and drag and put them together and align them in the center. Best hack ever. Best hack ever. And then before you do anything else, you're going to need to flatten everything. So we're going to go ahead and flatten that and that makes it a print and cut image. And so I'm going to delete this old one because we don't need it. And I'm going to go to make it and we don't need to reflect anything. We're just going to keep it as it is. No need to mirror anything. Right. No mirroring. I call it reflecting a lot. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so just keep it like this. You're going to see the black registration box. That's Love totally it. fine. And you will select continue. We are using a Maker 3. And I have already printed mine. And then I'm going to select water slide. So there is a cut option for this. Just kidding. Amanda, if you need to practice slicing, check out our 30-day challenge if you're a Maker's Gonna Learn member because you can learn what? how to start slicing and things like that. <laughs> It would be really, really um, great to learn all these basic functions of Design Space. And when you become a member, you get access to a ton of that, uh, which is super fun. Lauren, is, uh, Lauren was trying to raise her hand for a question, but so normally I use a maker, and I could have swore I used the a water slide option. Am I totally wrong on this? What it, What would you normally cut your water slide paper on? Um. Copy paper? No. I thought I thought I cut it on water slide paper. Maybe you we all. just cut it on vinyl because it is kind of like a. I would. Just it's like it a double. It's like a multi-layered yeah. material. It's not just paper. Even though it looks like copy paper, it's like the film and then there's an underneath paper. So let's just cut it at, under a vinyl, and it's not going to matter because we're going to be separating it right. anyways. We're going to be separating it from the backer. So I'm just going to use a basic vinyl cut setting. And I will select done. We don't need to do more pressure or anything crazy like that. And then we are going to go ahead and put our piece of paper on to the mat. Now, before we do that. I just went back and referenced. We've cut this on medium cardstock. We've cut this on a vinyl setting. Before. I feel like I've done it a couple different yeah, ways there, too. We haven't had any issues cutting it. It's pretty simple when it comes to cutting. Yeah. Um, you can choose anything. This training I was watching from ours. We've cut it at medium cardstock and it cut great. So, yeah, whichever. so whatever works for you. And so before we actually do this, now I pre-did this because we are in a studio, um, but what you're gonna do is print it out. So this is fresh out of the printer, okay? This came straight out of the printer. I'm gonna take this outside or to a well-ventilated area and I'm going to take this semi-gloss clear sealant. This is clear, okay? And I'm gonna spray a good even coat, nothing heavy, just a good solid coat over this. Let it dry 10 to 15 minutes. Go back, do a second coat. So we're spraying a second coat on here. Let it dry, come back 10 to 15 minutes and put a third coat on. And then you need to let it dry completely before we actually put this into the water. And do you know what I did, Tanner? What? Didn't bring the water in here. Well, let me go get you a little bucket. I got my bucket yesterday, and I didn't bring it in here with water. Yesterday we had um, the ice bucket make an appearance and today we'll it's, have you a little A little bucket water bucket. It's too. on my desk in there. Okay, so Tanner brought me um, our water. Um, basically what I do, anytime I do a water slide, I just kind of have this little bucket of water ready to go. But I'm gonna cut this. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this first and then we're gonna slide it in the water. So I'm just gonna sit this right up here and we will go ahead and apply our water slide to our paper. And you'll notice after you put on your sealant, it's very, it's not rough. It almost feels like a fine sandpaper, like a very fine sandpaper. And you guys, if you've never seen a water slide decal be put in the water, it's kind of a crazy thing. Yeah, it's wild. So I'm going to go ahead and send this through. I've got a regular fine point blade in here right now, and we are cutting this on the vinyl setting, just normal vinyl setting. No added pressure or anything like that. Okay, I just got an error, and it says that it's not reading my print then cut marks. So Did I'm you just, already spray it? 
Yeah, but I've cut it before. Right, 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 right. Sometimes that could happen. What right. we like to do, this might sound a little crazy, um, we like to like move the location or do something different. So for example, Lauren, could you turn off our main studio lights just to see if mm -hmm. that will make a difference for our cut? So yes. she's go dim and turn off two of our lights. This is what I love about live streaming is you get to see things experience um, live. So what could have happened was this, these really bright lights have been able to reflect onto our water slide decal paper. Um, and then we're not able to read the print and then cut. And we do um, this lines. in the, the craft studio all the time. Yeah, we move We will turn the lights so off. If we're trying to print and cut, the lights will go off if yes. it doesn't read it, especially with glossy paper, I've noticed. It's because it's, it uses a lot with the print and cut. It's using a lot to, it's basically scanning this bar. And so if the light is hitting it anyway, it's not able to recognize that box. So let's hope that this works. Okay, go ahead and cut it. It cut fine the first time I did it, so we'll see. Let me show you all what it looks like, what the paper looks like before we sprayed it with sealant, because it looks a little bit different before we actually spray it. Okay, is it is it detecting? Okay, it's scanning. It's, Let's see how far we get in the process. Oh, I'm a little nervous. Da, 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 da. Okay, you can turn the lights back on because it did not read this time. It didn't read it either? No. no. So what there's a couple different things that we could do. We Let's can talk about it. We could reprint it. Yeah. We could reprint it and try to send it through that way. But we're live. But we're live. So why don't we just cut it out? We're just gonna do a little hand cutting. Let's this just is back in the day. School. Back in the day they call this fuzzy cutting. Oh, like, we're off the the heck. Get it. Get <laughs> I, while you do that, let me teach you something that okay. I learned. You you have to have it cut that you she's doing everything the right, right. way. Right. <laughs> okay, so and this is just how it is in crafting. You just roll with the punches. I'm just gonna sit this to the side. Okay, are y'all ready for this? This is the fun part of water sliding This for is me. so fun. Okay, so I've got my bucket of water right here. Can you all see that really well? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get my pumpkin ready. And yes. you can even use, I'm going to take these ribbons out and use this little bucket right here. It's good to use something to add some stability to your yes. pumpkin so it's not rolling around everywhere. So I'm going to use this guy and I'm just going to sit my pumpkin in here like this and set it to the side. Now everyone at home, do you love water slide decals? Do you struggle with them? Let us know in the comments while yeah. we're doing this. Let us know your experience. Yeah, I'd love I to would... hear from you. Let us know if this is something you love, that you struggle, maybe you've never tried it. Um, let us know. Okay. Also, before I put this in here, I'm going to have my weeding tool ready. We're not weeding anything. I'm using this to lay my design flat. So here we go. I'm going to drop this in. Are y'all ready? It's going to curl up real good, just like this. That is expected. So you want to make sure to fully submerge it in the water. And you can actually kind of unroll it a little bit, OK? And this water is going to seep underneath that top layer, that film of clear sealant that we put on there. And we are going to re be removing the backing from behind the sealant. So we have some friends saying never knew it was a thing. Still haven't opened my Cricut, oh. but watch all the time. Allison, Allison, hey, have you grabbed a membership? We <laughs> grab the membership, get plugged in. Let's walk with you on this journey so that you can master that Cricut. Because if you love the show, if you love what we do here, you'll love working with us in the community. Never tried a decal. How well can y'all see this? Um, so if I put it on here, y'all can see exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah, if, if you can. Beautiful. I think that'll be pretty yeah. steady. Okay. I'm going to put the something. Y'all, if anyone's looking to try mm. anything new, I want to encourage you to try this out because this is a really fun, once you do one water slide decal, you'll start using it more and more on oh, surfaces yeah. like this because it is really cool. So you guys can see that the backing is trying to separate. What oh. I like to do, and now there's a couple different application methods for this. I like to pour water all over my surface. Yes. Um, a lot of people like to like pre-dampen. Yes, I like to have it like that. Let's That's my do tip. that. And you will find a little bit of bleeding on from your ink and that it's fine. We'll wipe it clean after Perfect. we're done. So I like to kind of get it where I want it. And you can see it's just sliding around right there. 
I'm going to start pulling this backer out. So just start pulling and I'll be very careful because it is finicky, it will try to tear. And this is exactly why I told you all to use a thicker font. Yeah. Because otherwise you're having to pay attention to all those little crevices on the right. dainty fonts. Mm -hmm. And this way it's gonna be a little bit more easier. And actually, I'm gonna take my scissors and cut this off. Just be careful not to cut your top layer. I'm just gonna cut that off. <gasps> da -da. Da -da. Da -da. So I like to have that water on the bottom so you have that uh, flexibility like we talked about at the top of the yes. show. Where you can move it around, you can make sure any air bubbles are out. It's really nice to have that extra little water under there so it, you can just work it out. So now is the fun part. Yes. She's got it on there and now is the perfecting stage. And this is where I was like, I just don't know. I mean, Alicia has, I mean, is doing a large image on a very curved and textured surface. Mm -hmm. So if she can do this on, you know, with these top, with this type of environment of the project, really big, it looks beautiful. Um, and the curved surface, you could do this on a flat surface. And you can like splash some water. Honestly, a spray bottle would not really be a bad idea. I do usually have, like a, spray have a spray bottle. But yeah. your trick with the, you know, as long as there's water, it, it just needs to stay moisturized. Yeah. So yeah. what I'm doing is just kind of working the wrinkles out as I go, as mm -hmm. I work my way up here. Yes. And that's why this weeding tool is so handy for me because I can get up under there without using yeah. my, getting my whole finger. That's amazing. And so this is really helpful. And so you're just going to smooth it out as you go. So Heather says, how long can you handle the decal before you can't move it anymore? So Heather, with the water slide, as long as there's water, it can slide around. Right. When you're done, when, once it's positioned where you want it, that's when you start drying it out, smoothing out all the water from underneath, and it'll start drying. And that's the glue. Like, that's what holds this together. There's no mm -hmm. additional glue. Which is kind of crazy because it's April, water. So April says, is this the same as using water with vinyl? No, it's a different material. Yeah, it say. is different. The The mindset is kind of similar. I will say with water slide, I think you have more working time than when you don't use um, right. water slide. So what I'm doing now is just kind of going in with a paper towel and just drying this yeah. out everywhere. Now, Christine says, um, was this printed on a special printer? No, this was just using an inkjet printer yeah, on standard water slide agent. paper. The good thing about water slide opposed to vinyl also is that you're not going to get all of those little wrinkles where the crevices are because you all know like when you apply any vinyl to a curved surface sometimes it's hard to get it to lay down flat and so with the water slide it kind of it's bendy so you can kind of flex it to where it's going to fit without um, causing a whole lot of wrinkles. Can you flip it up just so that you yeah. can see it a little better? Okay, this is where we're at. What do you all think? So this lasts quite a while. I've had water slide projects last two, three years already, and yeah. they really stay the same. I will say dust does attract to the water slide decal. Does it? A little bit, okay. but you can clean it off. That's my only, that's my only response. Yeah. Um, okay, later. and you all can see I did this one quite a while ago and it's yeah. standing up oh, really it, good. I love how it embraces the curves and embraces it the does. texture and it looks very, very, very permanent. It looks store-bought to me. Yeah, totally. So I'm going to let, I'm going to set this to the side and let it dry and I'm going to talk to you all about making your bows. So I'm just going to sit this right here. Oh, a lot of people are saying, asking, is it straight from your perspective? Yes, it looks a lot straighter. Um, in real? In real life. <laughs> On the camera, I will say it was looking a little odd. Because it's um, like, um, the pumpkin is weird shaped because it's like tall and, yeah. Yes. And with our water slides, we do not usually seal them. We do not usually seal Ooh. the um, projects. They're no. Kinda... I mean, it's going to be sitting on your fireplace or yeah, like, you know, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not going to be doing anything crazy. Yeah. So I'm going to be talking about the um, bows. So this is the original bow that I made here. So I can show you all exactly how to make this. Um, what I'm going to recommend to you guys, wired ribbon. If you're making Ooh. bows, wired ribbon is like numero uno because if you go in, and I love these Dollar Tree ribbons. These are great for rag style ribbons where you're just tying a knot in the middle. And so they're kind of flimsy. And I can make a rag style ribbon for you all if you would like. Um, but 
if you're going to make a big like fluffy bow like this you're going to need to buy wired ribbon so both of these are wired and then i've got my florals right here these are from hobby lobby the dollar store sells some really cute we were very high key impressed this year yeah they sell some really nice fall decor or i'm sorry fall floral decor i guess you could say okay what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take a strip of this a strip of my glitter okay i'm gonna flip it over and then i'm gonna take the same size strip of my gingham that's the checkered yes okay i want them to be um, i don't know what is this 28 24 inches ish it doesn't have to be that it, depending on how big you want your bow is how big that you need to stretch it out okay so i've got both and what i'm gonna do can you all see this really good okay i'm gonna take this side i'm gonna fold it over mm. so it's kind of coming at an angle okay I'm gonna hold it right here in the middle, do the same thing over here. Whoa. Okay, so it looks weird. We're gonna cinch it. Stop that. And so it's like a perfect little bow. Okay, how many of us want Alicia want to, to teach a bow making master class <laughs> inside the membership? I mean, we can, can make that, it happen. We just need, I just need to make, I just need you to teach me that I can show you I can show you okay. and then so um, you can either cinch this with some twine you can cinch it with another piece of the ribbon which is what we're wow. gonna do today so I'm just gonna cut off a little strip of this and I've got my hot glue gun on and I'm gonna clean up these ends as well here in a minute I'm just gonna wait and do it at the that end looks so good and so what I like to do for my middle portion is fold this can you all see that? I just kind of folded it in on itself. So it's like a little roll of the gold ribbon. And I'm going to lay it on top here. And then flip it over. So you can see this is up Look front. I'm going to actually trim this just a little bit. Because I'm going to glue it to the back of it. Okay. Yeah, Oops. I let go. Crazy. So I'm going to take this tail... And I'm going to put some glue right here and fold it over. I'm hoping Alex my glue Adrian guns. says, I make bows to sell. Good job. <gasps> Thanks. I used to work at a place and we did door signs. And mm -hmm. I had to make all the bows for everybody. That's, I mean, you're a natural. Like mass making bows in like 30 minutes That's for like 50 awesome. people. <laughs> so be careful not to burn your fingers. <laughs> And then I'm just going to hold that on there for a minute. And then I will trim this off. And let's go ahead and trim these edges. And then we're going to add this as well as the florals to our pumpkin. We're going to have to have this bow making class like ASAP. Is People everybody liking it? Yes. I'm going to be like the first student. You're going to be the first student. <laughs> yes. Okay. Also, this is another little tippy tip. If you're wanting to do these edges right here, this type of edge, I don't know if there's a name for it, um, like the double point edges, Yeah. you can f basically take your ribbon, you're going to oh. fold it in on itself, and you're going to cut up towards the folded edge. Yeah. So you're going to cut up towards the folded and edge. And look what happens. This is one of my favorite things I also learned at Stampin' Up. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yes. We need to go to Stampin' Up. Yes. Okay, so that's what you do. And then you, so fold it again. And you're always cutting towards the folded edge. So this is my folded edge. This is the open edge. I'm cu cutting up towards the folded edge. Just like this. And there you go. Dovetail. Look at that. Yes. Yes. And so I'm going to do this one up towards the folded edge. Wow. The sharper your scissors, the better this is going to look. Oh, yes. Yeah. So you need specific, like, fabric, like, ribbon scissors. Ribbon scissors are, are different to me from fabric scissors because the ribbons have those wires in them, and they will mm -hmm. ruin. Mm -hmm. If you've got good fabric scissors. Okay. And then I'm going to trim this little tail off, and then you can kind of fluff your bow out. Love that. So fluff it out. The bigger, the better when it comes to bows. And I'm just going to pull this all down. I mean, also I was a cheerleader for 16 years. Wow. So. <laughs> and now you're a volleyball player. Oh, I play rec league volleyball, you guys. Don't, it's so Don't fun. get it twisted. No, I love it. <laughs> oh. Okay, so there's our bow. And then what you can do, 
There's a couple different ways that you could do this technically. Um, you can attach these together with like some jute twine and then just glue all of this to the top of your pumpkin. Let me bring it over here. Actually, let's go like in, on camera one. And what I would normally do is kind of attach all this together so you can glue it all together and then glue it to your pumpkin. I'm, I don't know how straight that is. So this is... Wow. Yeah, you would just glue everything all together. That was so quick. Yeah. I'm going to attach these just so you all can get the full finished effect. Um, yeah. But what I would do is take these little florals and let's go overhead. I'll do this with this laying back. I haven't applied florals this way, but wish me luck. <laughs> so I'm going to take my hot glue gun. And if you're ever working with florals, just get a hot glue gun. Oh, you're going to yeah. need it. I worked at a florist, and they had these little, they weren't crock pots, but they were just like pots of hot full glue? of hot glue. And you would like have a spatula? Or what no, would you... they would dip the stems. Oh. So it's like a little melting pot, it's a like little a simmering pot. pot, pot wax, and it was full of hot glue. hot glue. And they would dip their stem, and then you put it in the wreath. Dip it and put no it in the wreath. Way. Lauren's going. <laughs> I love this. And that's how they were able to do their stuff so fast. And man, yeah. those girls were good at their job. That's incredible. Okay. And then we're you're learning trade secrets today. Trade secrets. I'm not a pro though. I just worked there for a little moment. And so I'm going to glue this on. Listen, hot glue. It should only take 10 to 15 minutes for your letter to dry from the water slide. Yeah. And um, that was a great question we're getting. I also take paper towel to help fast, you know, speed that process up. Mm -hmm. um, 10 to 15 minutes is good. And, you know, it, it might still be a little damp, sure, but just be careful. Okay. I put a good dollop of glue on there for our bow, which is our finishing touch. And then what you can do, once it's completely dried, and mine is not, don't try to move it when it's not <laughs> dry. Um, once it's completely dried, you can feather out your stems. Love it. I mean, that's it. You that's did it. That's all of it. Yeah. I feel like that's pretty easy. It's only 12.48. We're not even, honestly, we just hit the 45 minute mark. Honestly, y'all, the bow is... The bow is the hardest part. Yeah. And you just need to make sure that you keep your water slide decal yes. moisture with moist moistured. <laughs> Moisturized and make sure you keep water with it. If you need to get yeah. grab a spray bottle, that's super handy. Um, just make sure you keep it wet and use your weeding tool to kind of get all those bubbles out. Um, yes. But and yeah. And Jill, you could totally sit this outside. I would just be careful maybe somehow adding a weight to it or making sure because it is a faux pump. It's a foam pumpkin, so the wind will blow this away. Mm -hmm. But everything else is going to stand up really well, especially during the fall season. Can okay. you um, put dried water slide decal projects outside? Yes, you totally yeah. can. I would feel 100% confident um, with that happening. So, yay, okay. y'all did it! Halloween day eight. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So that's it. That's How it. is Halloween almost over?